Hello friends, my name is Ernesto, president of Eternity College. And today, wherever you are watching this, we gather here to celebrate a significant milestone in each of your lives, your graduation. It is an honor to stand before you. I've been in your shoes and it ought to be recognized that the work you have done matters. So congratulations. Friends, for many of you, this graduation is a transition point as you embark on a new journey filled with hopes and dreams and aspirations. And so this evening, I want to echo the words that Professor Joshua Grauman shared at my graduation back in 2015. It's a topic that's often overlooked in such joyous occasions, and that topic is failure. Yes, failure. It's a word that carries a heavy weight, and many of us are afraid to fail. But I can tell you this with certainty. Although you are smarter and you have immersed yourself in the story of the Bible, and undoubtedly that story has dramatically changed you, the things that you try to do, some of them will fail. I'm an Eternity graduate. I know many Eternity graduates. And having a college degree, even an advanced degree, as some of you are receiving today, it does not exempt you from future failure. Even embarking on journeys for the kingdom of God is not going to exempt you from potential failure. You know this already, but I want to tell you that that's okay. It's okay to, in faith, try something big. And it's okay for that thing to not work out. It's going to hurt. And some of it could possibly even be your fault. But these are the moments that teach you to trust God more and to relearn that he is faithful to his people. Sometime around 539 BC, Cyrus, the king of Persia, issued an edict that allowed the Israelites to return to Jerusalem and begin to rebuild the temple and to fortify the city. We read about this in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. But if you remember our time in these books, you'll remember that this period of Israel's history is kind of gray. It seems to be two steps forward in the right direction and then one step back in the wrong direction. I mean, the main characters of the books, Zerubbabel, Ezra, and Nehemiah, they seem to be righteous men who want the good and flourishing of God's people and his city. And yes, there are some amazing things that happen. The city is rebuilt, the temple is consecrated, the Levites are restored to service, and thousands of Israelites return from exile. The leaders, they receive supernatural favor from the Persian government. It really is this incredible story. But then, if you remember, in Nehemiah 13, he returns to the city and finds corruption in the priesthood and among the people. He finds that people have left their jobs in the temple, likely halting sacrifices, and they're back in fields trying to just survive. The people were working on the Sabbath, but not out of a need to survive. A lot of them were doing lavish things like treading grapes and trying to make wine. They had already reignited their dealings with foreign nations, so much so that they invite foreign nations to come into the city of Jerusalem on the Sabbath, through these newly restored gates that we had just read about, how God had provided and protected them to restore the gates of Jerusalem, and they opened them to the four nations to come in. After decades of work, after advocating for Yahweh's people to foreign kings, after securing the funding for the walls and the temple, after fighting wars, and after dealing with sin and corruption, read with me what Nehemiah says at the very end of his book, in chapter 13, verse 31. After a long list of things that Nehemiah has done to try and help the people, this is what he says in verse 31. He says, please remember me for good, oh my God. You see, one of the biggest problems that you're going to face, well, it's people. You're human. Your life will inevitably deal with humans. See, you may try after graduation, you may try to get into a restricted access country where you hope to plant churches to tell people who've never even heard the name of Jesus the good news. You might prepare for years for this opportunity, but it might not work out exactly how you planned. You might work in an internship for years, hoping for a job offer, only to find yourself no further along in your goals and your desires than when you started. 
You may get together with some neighbors or friends, you plan a church and things are going well for a while, but then for one reason or another, because humans are involved, it just might not work out. You could go on to graduate school, make it through a couple of years, and for whatever reason, it just doesn't work out. You might invest years of your life, decades of your life into caring for someone, into discipling them, teaching them. You might even be the one that baptizes them and then they'll walk out of your life and possibly walk away from Jesus. It's happened before and it can happen again. Proverbs 24, 16 says that the righteous may fall seven times. They rise again, but the wicked stumble when calamity strikes. Now, what does it mean to be the righteous in Proverbs 24? Now, each of you, I'm pretty sure you could write a seven to 10 page paper on what it means to be righteous. You could probably even tell me the intricacies of Paul's use of righteousness compared to Peter's use of righteousness. But aside from all of that, part of what defines those who have given their allegiance to Yahweh, those who are righteous, is an ultimate trust that he will be faithful to accomplish the work that he has set out to accomplish. And part of this strange hope that Christians have is that we can simultaneously recognize how difficult it is to be and to work with humans, and yet we know how immensely valuable God views every single human being on this planet. He loves humanity so much that he sent his son to live, to die, and to raise again. And for who? For humanity, for humans. I mean, from a practical perspective, it doesn't make much sense that God has decided to bind himself in covenant with the family of Abraham or with the church today. But he has. I think of Paul in his letter to the Philippians. In Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, he says this, Forgetting the things that are behind and reaching out for the things that are ahead, with this goal in mind, I strive toward the prize, namely the heavenly calling of God in Jesus Christ. See, you are not ultimately called to go overseas or plant a church or marry this person or do this thing or join this ministry or whatever it is. Your ultimate calling according to Paul here, and all the way back into Genesis 1 and 2, is to be an image of our good creator God. It's to seek to live according to the calling of being a citizen of his kingdom first and foremost before everything else. You know, Paul writes this letter to the Philippians from prison, and he's not omniscient. He doesn't know when or if he's going to get out of prison. He doesn't know if this is the last letter he'll be able to send. But what he does know is that despite the fact that being in prison to many people around him would be seen as a failure in his ministry, this failure is just a minor inconvenience. Painful, yes, Paul at times in his life is physically tortured and beaten within inches of his death. It's emotionally painful. Paul will often long to be with his brothers and sisters of his covenant family. And yet he puts those things behind him, not in a neglectful or demeaning or they don't matter way, but to remember that first and foremost, despite being perceived as failure or as pain, he must first seek the kingdom of God. So how do you do that? How do you do that in your life to come and as you move on out of Bible college? Well, I know I've said this to all of you before, but I want you to think right now. How many times do you think you've purposely read through the Bible? Like the whole thing, Genesis through Revelation. If you're a certificate student, I know the answer is at least once. If you're a bachelor student, it's probably three to four times. And for some of you, that feels like a lot that you read through the whole Bible one, two, three, four times. And you know what? It kind of is. But you're just getting started. This collection of books that we carry around in our phones or in our pockets or in our physical Bibles, it is designed to transform your perspective through the power and the work of the Holy Spirit. It's not a little magic book where you're meant to open it up, read a few lines, and fix everything in your life. This book, through the story of the Bible, is designed to constantly reshape your perspective on life's events. 
Now, you may be done with Bible college, but you are not done with the Bible. You have barely started. What is it that fueled Israel's return from exile, which then leads to the events of Ezra and Nehemiah? Well, it's Daniel. It's Daniel reading the story of Scripture, reading the scroll of Jeremiah, and he realizes that the exile is almost done, that God has promised to bring his people back to the land. It's Zerubbabel and Ezra and Nehemiah reading the Torah out loud over and over and over to get this story to transform the hearts and minds of Israel. It's prophets like Haggai and Zechariah calling Yahweh's people to live according to the covenant that they are under. Friends, inevitably this might be the last time that you and I have any sort of contact. Maybe not. Hopefully not. I love to hear about what you are all doing as God directs your passions in the years to come. But as you move into the uncertainties of life, know that failure and struggle, they are inevitable. But know that you serve a God who is strong and capable, loving and steadfast and long-suffering. So whatever you do, whatever failures you work through, whatever difficulties you encounter, Do not stop allowing the story of Scripture to transform who you are and how you think. Thank you for spending this last few years with us. Thank you for taking a time to intentionally study the Word of God. Now go out and be fruitful. Be thou my vision. O Lord of my heart, now be all else to me, save Thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, Thy presence my light. Be Thou my wisdom, Thou my true word, I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father and I thy true Son. Thou in me dwelling and I with thee one. Thou in me dwelling and I with thee one. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise thou mine inheritance now and always thou and thou only first in my heart high king of heaven my treasure thou art high king of heaven thy treasure thou art high king of Hi, I'm Joshua Walker. I serve as academic dean, and I'm joined by Ernesto Duke, our president, whom you've already met. As we prepare to confer the degrees upon the candidates, allow me to take a moment to explain each of the certificates and degrees being granted. The goals of all of our certificates and degrees are most simply expressed as fulfilling the greatest commandment of loving God and loving people, and in fulfilling the great commission of making disciples of all nations. We have candidates receiving certificates, associate's degrees, and bachelor's degrees. Each of these require students to be involved in ministry in a local church, to meet regularly with a mentor from their local church, and complete specific courses appropriate to their program of study. The academic requirements are significant, and the students have worked hard to meet them. However, what is most important is not whether these men and women have fulfilled a set of requirements, but instead whether or not they are faithful to use what they have learned in conjunction with the gifts and abilities that God has given them to be used by God in the lives of people. Today we confer upon them degrees which show that we have assessed not only their academic skills, but also their desire and ability to implement their knowledge in practical ministry. 
As Paul makes clear when confronted by detractors in Corinth, the true measure of one's life, the most accurate letter of commendation, the only validation of one's abilities is not written on paper, but instead is written in the lives of people. As he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, you are our letter, written in our hearts, known and read by all men, being manifested that you are a letter of Christ, cared for by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. If you have been impacted by the lives of these graduates, please let them know by posting comments about their impact and let them know during or after the ceremony what they've meant to you. I ask you to do this in order to show them that their true certificate, their true degree, is written upon your hearts and not on the piece of paper that they'll receive from us. Now to the most formal thing I say in a year. At this time, we are going to confer the degrees upon the candidates. These candidates have fulfilled all the requirements for the undergraduate degrees that I have previously mentioned, and it gives me great pleasure to present them for the conferring of the degrees with all the privileges and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. This year, we have 10 graduates from six different states and two countries. First up, graduating with a certificate in discipleship and counseling, Ricardo Monroy Serrano. After graduation, Ricardo plans on reviewing all of his notes, books, and videos from his time in eternity so that he can better prepare for discipleship and counseling in his community. He hopes to be a blessing and maybe even come back to study more at eternity. Ricardo, my dear friend, you did it. Congratulations. God is good. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, blessed be your name. You are good all the time. You are the God of mercy. You began a good work, your good work in my beloved brother and friend, Ricardo, and you are still working on him. I thank you, loving Father, for this biblical training at Eternity Bible College that my brother got. You granted his desire to be prepared to serve you, O oh Lord. Lord, you are the giver of all things. We are aware of it. You provided Ricardo everything he needed to receive this biblical training. Lord, please continue your work in him Help him to fix his eyes on Jesus. Help him to grow in a fellowship with you. Give him a growing passion to love your church and serve with the gift that you have given him. Open doors, Father, please, to Ricardo so he could share the gospel wherever he goes. We give you the glory, Father. You are worthy to be praised forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Graduating with a Certificate in Discipleship and Counseling, Catherine Rose Smith. After graduation, Katie plans on finishing her nurse practitioner school so she can use both her degrees to serve and minister to adolescents and young adults. I'm so thankful for the ministry that Katie has provided at Tree of Life to Open Bible Church for these last many years that I've known her and I'm so proud of the impact that eternity has had upon her as her ministry footprint and plans have grown. May this God be a season for her to enter in to an even greater impact for your kingdom so that many would come to know the grace and power of God. Through her encouragement, strength, and her ever-present witness in and through everything that she does, I pray in Jesus' name. Graduating with a Certificate of Biblical Studies, Leonel Laura. After graduation, Leonel plans to work full-time in construction while he waits on God to open doors for vocational ministry, hopefully working with youth. Lionel, we are all so proud of you for all you've accomplished these past couple of years. During this time, we have seen you grow tremendously in your walk with Christ and are all very excited to see what God has planned for you and for your family as Jesus guides you into your next step of ministry. And now, please join me in praying for Lionel. Our dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for Lionel. I thank you for his desire to seek your will and to further your kingdom and to do ministry in your name. I just ask that now you would give him wisdom in seeking what you would have him do next. Guide him, be with him. Let your will be done in his life. In your son's holy name we pray, amen. Graduating with a Bachelor of Advanced Biblical and Cultural Exegesis, Anna Grace Callison. 
After graduation, Anna will move from Alabama to pursue a Master's of Marriage and Family Therapy at Fuller Seminary's Arizona campus. She desires to continue growing in knowledge of the Lord and hopes to reach hurting people with the good news. Father, thank you so much for all that you've done in Anna's life. Thank you for the privilege of watching you at work, the way you've called her, Lord, the way you've equipped her, and the way you've gone ahead into the mission field to prepare the way for her. Thank you, Father, for who you are. We pray it in Christ's name. And I am so excited with you. I'm so blessed to know you. And we just wish you all the best. We love you, Anna. Happy graduation. Graduating with a Bachelor of Advanced Biblical and Cultural Exegesis, Elena Catherine Carbo. After graduation, Elena hopes to move to Austin, Texas. She hopes to help develop programs to provide safety, training, and care for vulnerable at-risk youth. She's not entirely sure what the future holds, but is excited to see how God uses her training from eternity. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for Elena. We thank you that we have been able to be blessed by her presence here at the club. But more importantly, we, we thank you for the calling on her life. We thank you for the gifts that you have given her. She is such a, a selfless person. She puts everyone above her. Lord, I know you have great plans for her. She cares so much for children to help them to protect them and i know that she is going to impact so many young lives out of her lord again we just thank you so much for how you've prepared her we pray blessings on the next part of her journey would you protect her would you um, just show her how much you love her and we just thank you again for, for everything that you were doing in her life. Thank you, God. Amen. Graduating with a Bachelor of Advanced Biblical and Cultural Exegesis, Alana Michelle Drianis. After graduation, Alana plans to spend the summer in Osaka, Japan, preparing to move there for long-term missionary work. She's teamed up with Encompass World Partners to join a church planting network in Japan. Congratulations, Alana. I am so proud of you, and I admire all the work that God has done in and through you over the last couple years. Here's my prayer for you. Father, we lift Alana up to you, and we ask that you would bless her in this next chapter of her life. Father, we thank you for all the things she has learned at EBC, and we just pray that you would continue to use all the things that you've taught her with the guidance of the Holy Spirit to advance your kingdom, to proclaim the gospel to those who do not know you. Father, would she lean upon your spirit? Would you fill her with all discernment and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ? Would she cling to the things that she has learned and known? And most importantly, would she find all that strength and satisfaction in you and you alone? Father, lead her, guide her, protect her, and keep her. We love her and we just pray that you would use her in mighty and big ways to proclaim your gospel to those who don't know you. Amen. Graduating with a Bachelor of Advanced Biblical and Cultural Exegesis, Jonathan Michael Oberholzer. After graduation, Jonathan plans to continue leading middle school ministry at the church at Rocky Peak, and eventually plans on pursuing more education for ministry. Hey Johnny, having known you since junior high, I've had the honor to be able to witness several milestones in your life. And I'm honored to be able to witness this significant milestone that you're completing your undergrad degree. And Johnny, I want to let you know that not only am I incredibly proud of you and what you've allowed God to do through you, but I'm praying for you. And specifically, I'm praying a prayer that at our church, you've heard me pray several times in different capacities. That in Ephesians chapter 1, you know, the Apostle Paul has heard wonderful things about the church at Ephesus. And then he says that he prays that the eyes of their hearts would be opened so that they would know God better. And so essentially Paul says, these are already people that God is doing great things through, and I wanna pray that they would experience more of who Jesus is. And so Johnny, as you experience this milestone, my prayer for you is you experience more of God's goodness, beauty, and power in your life. I'm proud of you. 
And finally, graduating with a Bachelor of Advanced Biblical and Cultural Exegesis, Elizabeth Jean Willingham. After graduation, Elizabeth plans to continue working for the Child Development Center with Adventist Health. She also plans to continue serving her church by leading a life group and following God wherever he may lead. Dear Father, Lord, I thank you um, for Elizabeth's heart and her desire to honor and serve you in this way by getting this degree. Lord, she's worked so hard for this. I pray that you would give her wisdom for her next steps, that she would know um, that you are with her always and that you have a plan for her in this degree and that you use her and encourage her and guide her in what comes next. And I just thank you and praise you for giving her a heart for you so strongly that she would uh, have the desire to get this degree and to put it into practice. And I just thank you and praise you and say in your holy precious name, amen. You did it, Elizabeth. You worked hard and you got this degree and I'm super proud of you. I know how hard you worked and um, you did it. So congrats. Thank you to all the graduates. Thank you to the families. Thank you for participating in this year's commencement. It was a joy to get to know these students, to educate them, to walk through the story with them. And we are so excited to see what God's going to do in their lives. Let's close the ceremony in prayer. Heavenly Father, I am so thankful for each of these graduates. I am thank you for the, the journeys that they've each been on and that you love each one of them individually and have had them on a specific journey up to this point through their time and eternity and that you know where they're headed after this. Um, for those that are confident where they're headed, I pray you would um, give them uh, perseverance in the face of difficulties they may face and that you would encourage them along the way. For those that are still trying to figure out what is next for them, I pray that you would give them wisdom and insight, that you would uh, speak to them by your spirit through um, other believers in their lives and direct them in the way that they should go. Lord, we are incredibly grateful to you for saving us, for rescuing us, for making us a part of your plan on this earth. Um, and we just rejoice to, to see these graduates go forth, and we rejoice to have been a part of their lives for their time while they were here. We thank you in the, the precious name of our Savior and King, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank, thank you. you.